to the government that I know what I'm doing and I have to follow the requirement that these birds have to do presentation. I have to do educational work with these animals according to my permits. So I see these birds as your birds. I'm just taking care of them for you, which is quite an honor. Working with birds like this is, it's amazing. And they are animals that are, they're always going to be wild. Even though he's used to me, and I've gotten him used to this, it's very odd for a hawk to be out here with a bunch of people. They do not hang out here for the winter. They love to eat ground prey, but also insects. And as you know, insects die off in the winter time. So they go where the food is. So they'll head south to uh, South America. Some of them go as far south as Argentina. We've done radio telemetry on birds like this, not me personally, and we've tracked it. Some of these birds will make a trip uh, into the United States as far north as Alaska, and then they will make a trip south for the winter as far south as Argentina, thousands of miles. And they have another identifier that the red tail doesn't have. Notice this dark bib of color, and then she's kind of reddish under here. The more common color phase is what's called a light phase, and they're lighter under that bib. <laughs> Almost in the United States, if you're a beginning falconer, you can have a juvenile red tail hawk or a juvenile kestrel. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a kestrel's a falcon. And the reason why is those birds are prolific in this country. Mm -hmm. So taking a juvenile out of the wild, well, a lot of times we'll put those birds right back into the wild when we're done working with them. drop your race on his own legs to cool off. So he pees on himself. That's why his legs are that chalky white color. And that'll get all over the glove. And so instead of risking, like I'm gonna pick up one more bird after this one, that glove stays clean. The other birds don't drop waste on the glove itself, but he will. So he gets his own glove because then the other birds don't have to stand in his waist. <laughs> But if you think about it, when I say he drops urine and pees on himself, uh, urine uh, is sterile. So it's not like he's unclean when he does that. We think it's gross because we don't do that. But urine is sterile. So it's not, it's not like he has a lot of germs on him or anything like that. This bird's injury, when he extends his wings, you can kind of tell what it is. So, you see, he will not fully extend the right wing. I didn't hear what kind of bird is it. Oh, I haven't said yet. What kind do you think it is? I thought it was a vulture. It is a vulture. He's a turkey vulture, and the only has a keen sense of smell. This bird's been in captivity with me since he was found, uh, and he was so he was born in 2006, and he came to me right after in November 2006. So he had. Let's see, how old are we now? He's nine. He's nine, as of this spring, he's nine, so he'll be ten this upcoming year. He's been with me the whole time, and that's why we're, we're kind of close. This is Aeolus, by the way, so that's his name. Okay, any other questions about Aeolus before I get out our last bird? These are very good looking birds. They're healthy looking. some out where we live because I hear them at night mm -hmm. and I can tell that they're migrating because sometimes there's four, sometimes there's only three there. Well, I don't know about migration. Most of the great horns will stay put <coughs> around, but what they might be doing is starting to get to know each other because they breed earlier than any other bird in the state that I know of. Great horned owls will start breeding in January, so they're probably starting to pair up. Oh. Yeah. Because I hear them at night and we have to watch our dogs. Yeah. How much does your dog weigh? The little one probably about three pounds. About three pounds. You know, there's a chance that a great horned owl could kill a dog or a cat 
But most of the time, if they did such a thing, which is rare, they're going to leave the carcass behind. They're just going to take a piece of it and leave. Because he himself only weighs three pounds. So he can't fly away even with a three pound dog. He can fly away with maybe a two pound dog. But he can't go very far with it or sockets. We can only turn our head about 90 degrees, but then I can glance with my eyeballs and look at you guys. Mm -hmm. He can't do that. So what happens for him is he's got the adaptation of more bones in his neck. All mammals have seven bones in their neck. He has 14. So he can turn his head 270 degrees instead of just the typical 90. Um, someone in the back, can you... <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing this. He's doing more of a 180 right there, but uh, the owls are the only ones with their eyes straight forward, just like a human. So they have the most rotation in the neck. The hawks can move their head 180 degrees, but they have, you know, the, the eye is not centered straight forward, so they still have a range of vision that they just move 180 degrees. How fast mm -hmm. can that owl fly? Mm -hmm. Not that fast. They are not known for their speed. If you think about it, even though they can see pretty well in the dark, you can still crash into things in the dark. So they're not moving on speed. Their adaptation is for stealth. So they're fast when they swoop down on something, but they're not fast in flight. Okay. And I don't know if they've been clocked. That would be interesting. The only bird I know of that's been clocked as far as speed with an actual you know, measure them was the peregrine falcon. You notice you can't hear anything when he flaps. Let's make him flap. Why is that? The feathers. The soft feathers and that cone-like structure is on the lead.